Hi friends, welcome to another workout here, a little mat workout on Body Lab TV. My name is Adam, I'll be guiding you through this workout today. So some apparatus or equipment if you have some, a mat, any kind of mat really, a towel or a slider disc, a foam roller, some dumbbells or any other kind of weights, maybe ankle weights, and a band. Now, maybe of all of this equipment, some of this, or none of this equipment. I'll do my best to give you variations with and without the equipment. So really all you need is your body and a great attitude. Let's get started. So I'm gonna do a little mobility warm up here. Downward facing dog. So you crawl out, kind of a plank position, and then you lift your hips up, push your chest back. Now notice you're trying to get the weight back onto your heels. So if you're open too far and you feel like your arms are struggling already, like you're in a plank, just move your feet up a little bit. Try to get the weight back onto your legs. Don't worry if your heels touch or not. Fingers turn out nice and wide, press flat into your palms. Maybe a little movement in your shoulder blades here, up and down. Mm. Feel the blood rush your head a little bit. Turn up your breath loud and proud. So your hips are up nice and high, kind of tilting that tailbone up. You might need a little knee bend here. I like to pedal my legs out, working some calf stretches. Now, depending on your mobility and your level of stability, you might need to adjust the feet. I scoop my back a couple inches now. So now my body's starting to move around. And then we're gonna get a little more movement in the spine. So set the knees down. Set yourself tabletop in the suit. So you're gonna try to get your shoulders right over your wrist, maybe a little bit forward here, so the front of the shoulder is aligned with the knuckles. Knees under hips. Now, keep your tummy muscles tight. Squeeze your abs, inhale, push your chest down towards the mat. Big inhale. Now keep your abs tight, exhale, lift your ribs up and spread your shoulder blades wider. Inhale down. Exhale, squeeze. All right, take this movement slower. Carefully try to push it open a little farther, up and down. Now, cat cows, most of us know these. It's a very beneficial movement, but very neglected and overlooked because of its simplicity. And yes, it is simple, but it's often the simple things, the little things that are the best things. So take a moment, just start to enjoy some movement and breathing. Now, as you're moving and breathing, you might play with the wrist. Some people, to turn their wrist out, rock around a little bit, maybe forward, maybe inward, kind of like a bulldog, maybe backwards. Usually backwards here, fingers point to knees, give us uh, the best stretch or release into the wrist bones. So we are gonna do some planking movements, which puts a lot of pressure onto the wrist, especially if your grip strength isn't there. So it's nice to move the wrist bones around a little bit, get some fluids. A deeper stretch would be to flip one palm up, rotate the arm bone so the elbow creases forward. I like to do one hand at a time. Some people can do both, but that might be a little bit too much pressure. All right, finish up and then shake it up. Make sure some blood's flowing through those hands. So from here, we're gonna go back to down dog. We're gonna add more movement in the spine. So, you know, I shift forward the plank. Gently set my knees down, release my toes back there. Now keep the ab muscles tight. You're gonna carefully roll down to your stomach. You know, press back up, little cobra stretch. Lift the hips, tabletop. Curl the toes, and down dog. So let's do that a couple more times incrementally. Inhale, shift forward the plank. Exhale, set the knees down, release the toes. Shift the hips forward, keep the tummy tight as you slowly roll down, kind of like a little wave. Inhale, press it back up. Back to the tabletop, curl the toes, lift the knees, exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank, exhale. Lower, roll down. Inhale, curl back up. Tabletop, exhale, down dog. Now we're gonna work into a little bit more hip mobility. So your right foot's gonna step next to your right thumb, right as long as position. Might take a couple steps, that's good. Set the back knee down, release the toes. Careful with this back knee, you might need to put a towel under it if your kneecap's a little sensitive. Hands on the front, right knee here. Lift the chest up. 
supported lunge, hip flexor stretch. Now you're gonna move the hips around just a little bit, trying to get this, in this case, my left hip flexor to soften and relax. Chest is up and open, so the shoulders are hanging back, relax. Got a little lift up in the belly button here, stabilizing the low back. Now knee and arm, reach my arms up. Reach back with the arms, trying to get a deeper stretch, and then exhale, half split. So hands come down. You might want to scoot your right foot forward an inch or two. Curl back on the toes. As you exhale, you fold over the knee. Light hamstring stretch. Let's try that a couple more times. Again, this supporting knee here, in this case, my left knee. Be careful with the kneecap if it's sensitive. Maybe roll the mat under or find the pillow. You know, up. Open the hip. Exhale, glide back. Stretch the hamstring. Let's try that two more times. Inhale, glide forward, up. Exhale, glide forward, stretch. One more. Inhale, glide forward, up. Exhale, glide back, stretch. Now, inhale, you're going to come back to that runner's lunge position. Curl the back toes under, lift the knee back up to a nice, straight, strong back leg. Standing L, we call this. So we scoot, or I call this. I don't know what anyone else does, but whatever you call it, let's work on it. Fingertips forward, back leg lifts up. Now the standing leg right here, the right knee, keep a little bend. Fingertips from the balance. Try to flatten out your back and lean your chest forward. Now this lifted left leg here, squeeze it straight and pulse it. Tummy tight, big deep breaths. Get your uh, glutes to warm up. And then exhale, step back to runner's lunge, nice and slow, try not to fall into it. Plant your left hand down, inhale, reach your right arm up, twist, and then exhale. When you come down, you're going to try to get this right elbow to tap your big toe. Don't worry if you actually touch or not. It's just a direction, not a destination. You know, up, exhale, down. All right, keep going with that while I show you what it looks like from the front. Inhale, up, exhale, down. Now, I want you to notice as I come down, this right knee here, it stays in tight to the shoulder. The tendency is the knee to flop open. We'll get to that. Hug it in tight. Inhale up. Exhale down. All right, everybody, couple more rounds. Three, two, one. Step back to a plank position. All right, fire up your whole body. So push your chest forward. Make sure your tailbone isn't popping up real high. You'll know your lower back will feel a little cramping. So tuck that tailbone under, or more accurately, stay in that plank. These hip bones here, curl inward towards your belly button. Maybe use your feet, rock forward and back a little bit, testing out your arm stability nicely. Maybe you can rock side to side a little bit, trusting each individual arm. If you need to modify, put your knees down, put your elbows down, it's all good. For five, four, three, two, one. To get to your tummy. So I'm gonna set my knees down first. Lower down. Now I'm gonna take a class behind my back. Squeeze my palms together. Pinch the shoulder blades together, lift the chest in now. Now breathe really big. So it's a little bit of a back extension here, trying to get the entire supporting muscles on the, along the spine to warm up. Maybe lift the hands off the butt. Maybe lift the legs, or the toes, breathe. Three, two, one. Let it all go nicely. Plant the hands, in out, push up, little curl or stretch. Roll the shoulders back and keep the elbows in. Notice mine's still a little bit bent, that's okay. Some of you might go straight up, that's nice. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. So I bring my knees in, curl my toes under, lift my hips up, press my chest back. Big exhale. Other side, left foot steps forward, runner's lunge, find your stance, set the back right knee down, release the toes. Careful with that right knee, inhale, hands on the front left knee, lift your chest. Settle in. So now I'm trying to get my right hip flexor to soften a little bit. Shoulders just kind of hang back, relax. Keep lifted through this belly button up so that way you don't cramp the low back. So nice open chest, breathe. You know, arms up, pull the arms back, pull the shoulder blades down. So from the front, you should look like you're shortened up in the neck. 
pull your shoulder blades down. You should have a nice open space in the neck, but try to pull the arms back. We got tight arm pins. We don't put our arms above our head enough. All right, exhale, half splits. First one, maybe scoot the foot forward a little bit, just to hold a little extra longer. Feel the hamstring muscles kind of slide into place. Curl the toes back. Breathe. All right, let's start to glide this. So I gotta scoot my front foot back a little, open up into my supported lunge, inhale up. Exhale, sit back, hamstring, slow. So not to totally grind on the knees here. Inhale, hip, stretch. Exhale, hamstring. One more, inhale, hips forward, belly button up, arms back. Exhale, hamstring stretch, half splits. Toes, nose, chest, knee. Standing L, inhale, come back up to the runner's lunge first. Establish your stance, fingertips forward. Lift the back right leg up. Now once again, this standing left knee, keep it a little bent here so you don't block out that joint. The lifted leg you can, there's no weight on that. You now push your chest forward, keep your tummy tight and try to pulse that lifted right leg. You'll let some heat in those glutes and abs, which hopefully we get to work more here in a bit. Three, two, one, feet together, fold. You now stand up, reach up, stretch up, arms press. Exhale, bring your arms down to your side. Now, zip up your legs. So, from the front, the big toes are going to be touching together, but put the body weight onto the heels. Now, just start with the hip motion here. Hips go back. Notice the kneecaps here stay behind the toes. So, the tendency is to let the knees go past the toes, usually because people are trying to stay too upright here. Hinge forward from the hips a little bit, and then pull your kneecaps back. Tuck your tailbone down. So let's try that a couple times. Stand up straight, tight tummy, exhale, hinge the hips back, keep the knees behind the toes. Let's try that again, inhale, straight out. Exhale, sit it back. Thighs together, so really suck your inner thighs together like you're trying to hold a piece of paper. It's a really important piece of paper, like a hundred dollar bill or something. Now we're gonna add some movement with the arms. So inhale, straighten out, reach your arms up, cactus arms, we call this here in Phoenix, open the chest. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, you're gonna go back into the squat, but sweep your arms back. Now on this one, you can even bring your chest lower, flatten out the back, you got a little pinch in your shoulder blades here. Inhale, reach, stretch, exhale. Open the arms, chest high, tummy tight. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, sweep and squat. Flat back, weight is still in the heels, pull those knees back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, squat back, sit it back. Fear squat, arms back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring your arms down. All right, we're gonna start to warm up the legs. A little squatting motion here. So I'm gonna face you guys so you can see what's going on. You face whichever way you want. Let's start with a typical squat stance. Heels, must be about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider than the shoulders here, like mine are, toes turned out. Now, start slow just to feel the movement in the joints. I like my arms forward for counterbalance. Exhale down, find your depth, inhale up. All right, everybody, you keep going. I'm gonna talk about some alignment here while you're squatting. Knees open out. I don't care if the feet are water, but open the knees out. In other words, don't go knock or knee in. Keep squatting. Now from the side, what I want you to see, the hips go back. So a lot of times people try to stay too upright in the squat, and this causes the knees dump forward. That will cause you problems later. So keep the hips back, let the big strong glute muscles take the load. Not all these little muscles around the knee, the strong muscles, that's what it's for back there. Exhale down, you know it. All right, keep squatting. Another thing I want to talk about is the pressure. Make sure the heels stay down. Another common mistake, and it's usually some mobility issues around the ankles or hips, is to pop the heels up. That will also drive pressure into the knees. So do your best to keep the heels down. Some things to help with that. Maybe you've got to lean forward more, keep the back flat without rounding. 
Maybe you gotta go a little bit wider, give your hips some room to move. Three, two, one. All right, now let's really start to work these legs. I'm gonna grab a band, a mini band. If you have one, use it. If not, don't worry, you can do these movements without. I'll give you some variations. Now this one, it helps to put the band right around the bottom of the knees here. It's nice to keep the band flat, you know, stretch smoother instead of being twisted up. All right, find that stance. Now with the band, your heels might be a little narrower because you're gonna try to resist the band pushing these out. So hips back, knees out, squat. Up. Now I'm gonna keep a slow tempo here, especially for those of you trying to watch the alignment and the movement. If you're feeling pretty stable in your joints, you might kick up the tempo. Get some nice gliding going. All right, keep your squat going. Now notice the band, if you have it, is gonna to try to collapse the knees in. If you don't have a band, you're gonna do a half squat. Put your hands, your palms outside your knees. You're gonna to try to push your knees in, but use your leg muscles to resist that. So it's more of a half squat motion if you don't have the hand band. Use your hands, breathe. Now again, from the side, keep squatting. Hips back. Knees open wide, hips back. Now we're gonna hold it down for a little bit of pulse here. I'm gonna tie this one. 30 second pulse in three, two, one, hold it down. Okay, if you have the band, pulse your knees out. Stay on the heels. If you don't have the band, you're gonna pulse up and down. All right, keep going. Notice, I'm only about halfway into my stance. Now way down here. If you can manage this down here without hurting your joints, that's fine. I like a half stance for my own anatomy because I keep my glutes targeted better that way without losing my, my lumbar or compression in the back. Three, two, one, you now stand up. All right, let's take this to a little interval. So we're gonna squat, we're gonna sidestep into a squat. So check it out, with or without the band, that's fine. Feet together to start, stand up straight. I'm gonna step to my left and squat down. Then I'm gonna step back to center. Then I'm gonna step to my right, squat down. All right, keep going. Some of you are gonna kick up the tempo. So if you feel stable enough in your joints especially, you can do a little faster step. But again, make sure you're driving your knees out. Don't let them collapse in. So you don't wanna see any knock or any, like right? you're doing the pee pee dance kind of squat. If you feel like really stable, you wanna get a little more cardio, jump into it. So check it out. I hop and squat. Down, tap in, hop, tap in, hop. 30 more seconds. Your variation. Now, some of you might feel a little popping, clicking in the knees. If that bothers you, back it off, slow it down. Maybe the band needs to move farther from the knees, because sometimes that band will cause that kneecap to move around. It's not really a good idea when you're doing multiple reps. Let the kneecap move on its own. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, one more round, a little pulses. So again, Oh, about half to squat. If you don't have a band, you're pulsing the hips. If you do have a band, you're gonna open the knees. Breathe. 30 seconds here. Getting the legs nice and warm. After this, we're gonna take it down to a bridge position, which I'll get into first. 10 seconds, keep pulsing. Now first I'll show you the bridge from the front. So you're gonna come down and join me here in three, two, one, have a seat. Now the band, if you have it, let's slide it above the knees. This is a more stable position for the joints down here in the legs, so we can put a little more pressure on the muscles. So I'll turn sideways in a second, but here's what it looks like from the front. Roll into the back, shoulder blades together, lift the hips up. Notice the knee caps here are just about hip width, maybe a little wider, not collapsed in. Notice the toes, my toes in this case, are angled out just a tiny bit. Now, from the side, there's hip bridge, so it's not a back bend, it's a hip bridge. Big difference. Knees align with the heels, shoulder blades together, hips lifted. Now notice my hips aren't really high. If I was in, say, a yoga class trying to do a back bend, I'd be really sticking out my chest here a lot. Here, hip bridge, I want you to pull these ribs down, tilt the tailbone forward. 
So now it's just not as high as most people think. Shoulder blades together, press into your arms. Now, you're gonna move the hips here. Check it out, slowly down, tailbone is last. Now when I come out, tailbone is first. So there's a little undulation or fancy word, articulation of the spine. Exhale down, inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up. Now I'm gonna be here for about 15 more seconds. And then, we're gonna hold it up for a little pulse. Five, four, three, two, one, hold it up. All right, if you do not have a band, I wanna see these hit. well, I can't see you, but let's have these hips go up and down a little bit. Keep your tummy tight, up and down a little bit. If you do have the band, just like you did when you were in a standing squat, hips up a little, separate the knees, out, out, out. Now notice the knees never come together, but the heels need to stay under those knees. Breathe. All right, last little bit here. Then we're gonna do a little bit of ab work. And then some more single leg work. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Roll it down. All right, you're gonna slide the band down to your feet. If you don't have the band, that's okay. You can do this still. Bicycle crackers. Now here's the difference. Band is around the feet. If you have the band, you're doing slow bicycles. Press the other leg out, elbow to opposite knee, switch. Now if you don't have the band, you can kick it up, go a little faster, but keep your crutches going. Very important, make sure you're not flopping your elbows. So try to move the chest and ribs side to side. Your lower back's gotta stay flat. It's almost like your tailbone's tilted up. Keep crunching, everyone. Now, I still said fingertips on the back of the neck, so don't grab your head and pull on your neck. That's gonna cause bigger problems later. Now, if you feel pressure in the lower back here, you might be arching up. Maybe you're extending your legs too low. So some people might be more stable, kicking their legs up a little higher here. If the band is distracting you, get rid of it, keep crunching. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we're done with that band for now. Grab your knees, hug your in like a ball, and rock your on your back so you can sit up. All right, so we are gonna do some core work here before we do some single leg. So modified push-up position, which is on the hands and knees, like I'm about to do push-ups here on my knees. If you have what's called an ab wheel, some of you know what that is, you hold this wheel and you push in and out, that's the wheelbarrow motion. We're gonna do that now. So if you have an ab wheel, use it. I don't have one with me right now. Otherwise, you're gonna walk your hands off slow. Check it out. Little steps with the hands. Notice there's no sagginess in the lower back. Take it out about as far as I can, maintaining stability, and then walk it back. Some people know how to do this move with, say, slider dicks under your hands. Here's a variation, a foam roller. So this is more of a body saw action. So if you got the ab angle or you're doing the walkouts, go for it. Now, with a foam roller, I put my forearms on the roller, scoot back to this modified plank position. Now I'm gonna move my forearms forward, back, forward, back. Some of you might be able to get a little more into the wrist. Now this is gonna be some nice pressure on the tricep muscles, that's good too. But definitely a lot of core work, breathe. Another variation, keep going, on the knees. Or shin bones, excuse me. So this time, I'm rolling along my shins, I use my arms to press back, pull forward. This is my favorite variation, press back. Pull four. This one's really lighting up my core. All right, keep going for five, four, three, two, and one. All right, here we go, single leg work. So if you have a slider disc, handy, I'm gonna start with my left leg just to demonstrate. Slider disc, or I'm gonna show you a towel, depending on the floor 
you're, you, you're uh, working with here. I have a concrete floor, nice and polished, so this will be pretty smooth. So, right foot is tippy toed on the towel water slider. Stand up straight, soften that left knee. Notice you're going to try to keep the knee over the ankle. So what helps when you're using a sliding lunge is to lean forward a little, hinge forward from the hip joint, press back. Now notice the knee does not duck forward. So that's the first thing most people, are, especially you're not used to this lunge, the knee dumps forward past the toes. Again, that could hurt you later. So if you gotta lean forward more, like I am now, do it. Knee cap stays just behind the toe. Now it's gonna squeeze your arm muscles hard, light up. Slowly down. All right, keep going. If you got pretty good stability and rhythm, you might kick up your tempo. If you need to bend this right knee a little bit, keep going. Now, if you don't have the slider, here's what you're gonna do. Split stance, bend both knees, pause. You're gonna kick this right leg back, in, stand up. So without the sliders or towel, split squat, tap, in, lift. I'll show you that again. Split squat, reach back, tap, in, lift. All right, keep going. Got about 30 more seconds. Notice the chest is forward, but the shoulders are not slouching. And big squeeze of the abs. Try to relax those left toes out there. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So we're gonna hold a long jump. This is an opportunity for those of you that have weights. You hold the bottom of this lunge, reach your arms back. So you can pulse your arms back. You can do dumbbell taps or just try to clap your hands. If you don't have weights, maybe you want to go forward. Or maybe you do if you do have weights. But also notice, stay in position, knee over ankle, line it up. You're going to be here for 10 more seconds. We're going to go back to the lunge. Five, four, three, two, one. Right back to your lunge. I'm going to start with the sliding one. Hands on the hips, chest forward. Kind of a flat back. Now if you're fighting with the towel or slider or your left knee is flopping around too much, you might just want to go to the split squat with the tap back on this back leg. Out, in, up, down, out, in. So even myself, I start to lose control of my muscle fatigues. And so if I'm losing this left knee, the standing knee, find something else more stable to do. Maybe you just need to go into your split stance and pulse it up. 15 seconds. 10 seconds, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, stand up. All right, we're gonna do, it's called a single leg deadlift, also known as an RDL Romanian deadlift. Now, I like to be weighted for this one. If you've never done this exercise, try it without, maybe be close to a wall. So you can use it for balance. So I'm still on the left leg. Now I'm gonna tip it to my right foot, so all my weight goes into my left leg. Now, chest goes forward, leg extends back. And slowly stand up. Try not to let this right foot touch. Lean the chest up, tilt forward. All right, keep going while I talk about some alignment here. Now notice, it's chest forward, not down, not hunched over. Keep coming with flat back. So, if you can only tilt forward, say about 45 degrees, and that's a range of your control, that's okay, stay there. Now, if you happen to have to tap your foot because you're about to lose balance, well, that's normal. Don't be angry, just keep going. Now, from the front, those of you that have weights, you're gonna play with an arm movement. Forward, come up, maybe it's a bicep curl. Forward, tummy tight, maybe it's a shoulder raise. A little Karate Kid movie, some of you remember that one. Take it forward, reach up, maybe shoulder press. So you got lots of variations. Maybe when you kick it back, you get a little tricep extension. All right, let's hold it forward, warrior three position, in three, two, one. So chest forward, again, I'm gonna stop about here. Some of you can go all the way forward without hunching the back. Reach your arms back and pulse. 
Now, from the front, notice my foot is kind of under the belly button, not perfectly out to the side. That's okay, keep your tummy tight, stick your chest forward and breathe. Now right, you're gonna go back to the single leg moving in five, four, three, two, one. Get back to your glide. Now keep going also, the standing knee, don't lock it. You got all your body weight, maybe some extra weight on that knee. So never lock that joint. We don't wanna overload the joint and you don't get buff joints. You can get strong legs, your muscles can handle it, but if you start to wear down those joints, you might not be able to work out one day. And that's a bigger problem. Breathe. 30 seconds. How are those arm movements? Ooh, almost lost my balance there. Remember, if you're wobbly, you fall in a little bit, that just means you're trying, you're getting stronger. Don't be mad, be proud you're even attempting this. 10 seconds. Now coming up, we're gonna hold the feet together, just work an arm movement. In five, four, three, two, one. So remember that squat earlier, hips back. This one I want you to lean forward more, legs together. So from here, if you don't have weights, hands on hips, pulse, maybe arms forward. If you do have weights, you're gonna play with some shoulder movement. You gotta raise it out to the side, forward, back. So you can pick one of those three or alternate. Side, forward, back. All right, keep going. Now, one thing I want you to know, when you do these arm movements, make sure you're not shrugged up. Shoulders all up into the neck, cramping the neck high by the ears. So shoulders need to stay down away from the neck. Whether you go sideways, whether you go forward, whether you go back, keep the shoulders away from the neck. In other words, there's gonna be a little pinching the shoulder blades back right there. All right, 10 seconds, and we're gonna use the right leg next. And I'm gonna turn around so you can see the action there. In three, two, one. All right, set your weights down for now. If you do this workout again later, maybe you keep the weights for the lunge. You can do some stuff with the arms. All right, so this time, I'm running all my weight on my right heel. So I got my left foot tippy toed on the side of the towel. Now I'm all on the right heel. Now start with a tiny bend in that right knee first, so you take the load, up, load away from the joints, sit it back. Now some of you might be able to go just as slow as I am, focusing on maintaining constant muscular engagement, taking out that momentum. You want a little more heart rate, maybe you kick up the tempo. Now again, keep this front right knee behind the toenails, don't let it jump forward. And when you lift, you gotta use your abs. And notice, I have to be hinged forward a little bit. Hinged forward, but not slumped or slouching over. The variation without a slider or towel. Split stance, you bend both knees, lower down. Keep this left leg back, bring it in, slowly up. Now this one is nice to go a little faster. But again, if you're losing stability in that knee, it's shaking around, things will shake and wobble, that's normal. But if it's getting too out of control, back off, slow down. So maybe you're going too fast, maybe you're trying to overextend your lunge. So don't think stretching like you're doing yoga. You need to back off a little bit your full range of motion so you keep your muscles engaged. All right, we're gonna hold it down in three, two, one. So maybe you just do a hip pulse here. Hmm. Maybe there's another option. I don't know if I meant just on the other side, but you can just use a slide in and out to a little kick. Also, if you are using dumbbells, you can hold that position, tap, maybe arms forward, just reach, pulse. Either way, let's give it about 15 more seconds and then hold. Then we'll go back to that lunge. Here we go. Three. Two, one. All right, we're going back to your lunge. Now again, sometimes throughout the minute of this exercise, you might have to change your variation a little bit. And that's a good thing. That means your muscles are starting to get a little fatigued, so something's happening. That's why you're doing this. You're trying to make a change, let something happen. 
You don't have to be forceful or make it happen. Sometimes you gotta be patient with your strength and give it your body a chance to work. So say right about now, I'm used to filling my knee. I'm gonna switch to the split squat with the tap back. Chest is hinged forward still. And notice no shoulder slumping. Also, counter that, not arching into the low back here. So it's tricky, but that's the point of this fitness, is to keep the spine in a stable position. This body control, this health we're working on. All right, we're gonna take it to those single leg deadlifts, remaining deadlifts in about 10 seconds. I'm gonna get my weights ready for you. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, stand up. Grab your weights if you got them. Load your right heel. Tippy toe your left foot. Now just start by finding the balance. Chest goes forward, left leg back. Slowly stand up. Try to bring that left knee through without the foot touching. Big deep breath. Notice the standing knee. Keep going. Notice the standing knee. A little bend. Also, be aware, are you trying to go too far down and hunching over? You really don't need your spine to go past parallel. For some of you, that's a little bit much for your body control. So maybe you just go out about 45 degrees. That's okay too. From the front, shoulders stay level. Notice that my legs a little angled in, so my heels kind of align with the belly, but that's center of gravity. That's normal. Maybe play with some arm movements. You've got those shoulder raises, shoulder press, maybe just a little bicep curl. You can also kick it back, which we're gonna do here in five, four, three, two, one. So extend the leg back, reach the arms back, pulse. Now, if you don't have weights, but you still wanna feel a little challenged with the arms, reach forward, pulse. But also, make sure you're not shrugging up in the neck. Pull those shoulder blades down. Stay wide in the neck. You're gonna resume that single leg lift in five, four, three, two, one, stand tall, kick it back. Lift up, maybe find some nice arm movement. How's that breath? Sometimes we get under a little strain, especially intentionally. Forget the very most important thing, breathe. Strengthening your breath and lungs is so important. I'm gonna let shoulder race to the side. Notice shoulders stay away from the neck. Standing right knee has a little bend. Knee comes up. Another purpose for the knee coming up through, make sure you add and engage. That's what helps you lift up. 15 seconds, everyone. And we're gonna go back to some core work. Five, four, three, Two, one, if you have weight, set them down. Back to some core work. So, find that band again if you have it. Put it around your feet. This time you're gonna get into a plank position. And again, if you don't know the band, you can still do this. So plank, shoulders back, elbows in. Now, if you have the band, slow mountain climbers. If you don't have the band, try to kick up the tempo. But I want you to notice, my not dumping my lower back, no arch down there. Lift up, slight rounding maybe through the shoulders, that's better. So rounding the shoulders up a little bit is better than collapsing the low back. However, squeeze your shoulder blades back so you're not shrugged up in your neck. Don't hide your neck. Three, two, one. All right, alternating planks. Side plank, excuse me. Elbows down. If you got the band, just keep it on. Rotate one arm up to the ceiling, stretch open your chest, slowly down. You know, on this side. You know, one of my favorite moves, several reasons. Keep going, I'll show you from the front. So obviously it's working core, which is amazing. But also, you're opening your chest and shoulders. A lot of planking movements can result in tight chest and shoulders, so you've got to counter that. And this one's nice because you get to keep the core engaged working it, but at the same time, you get to work a little mobility. And we all slouch at some point in the day, so it's nice to be able to correct that. 
All right, you're back up from mountain climbers in five, four, three, two, one. Come back up, steady your plank. If you need to be on the elbows, that's okay. Mountain climbers. Now, if you feel like the band is cramping, say your hip flexors, or it's causing you to lose stability in your lower back, get rid of the band. Modifications, maybe go to the elbows, and you do hip dips side to side. Those you doing hip dips, here's what it looks like from the back. I lift through the center, stick my butt up, down, up, down, up, down. All right, keep going, work your variation. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, knees down, lay on your stomach. I'm just thinking one more little butt exercise on you here. So the band is on the feet. If you don't have the band, that's okay. You can still probably do this. Now, the toes are gonna turn out, chin down on the hands. I lift my legs up, keep the abs tight, legs straight, and I'm gonna pulse the band out. So, let me turn, so you can see the action in the legs here. And if you don't have the band, you just go a little wider. So look at my feet, they're turned out. Some of you might know this reference. Charlie Chaplin style and I'm pulsing up. Now my legs are lifted so I can squeeze my butt, but my abs are holding tight. Neck is relaxed. Now if you don't have a band, so let me kick it off. You just go a little wider and a little slower. That way you don't balance your back. Right, keep going. We have about 10 more seconds here. I'm gonna grab my roller here and get ready to show you the next exercise a little bit. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, get out of there. Now, if you have a ruler or slide disc, here's some variations. So, first I'll show you the harder variation with a towel or slide disc. Toes, all of them, feet, both of them, on the slider towel. Hands on the shoulders, plank it out. Now, notice the hips are lifted a little bit. It's almost a, a flat back, Spine parallel to the floor, bend the knees in, hard air crunch, push up. Now notice my hips are not bouncing up and down. Shoulders might go forward slightly over knuckles, but make sure you're not popping up in the air, make sure you're not arching down. If you don't have a slider, if you have a slider, go for it. If you don't have a slider, walk. Tiny steps. Keep going. My favorite variation, the roller. So earlier I showed you when you open up the roller, when you're moving your shoulders. Now, hold the shoulders still, pull the knees in. Curl up like a ball a little bit, open, crunch. Maybe you can get it up on the tippy toes. Check it out, lift, woo, big ass squeeze. Now. All right, everybody, try it for about 10 more seconds. Where's that breath? Five, four, three, Two, and one. All right, back it off. Woo. So if you have the roller, we're gonna use it for thoracic extension. If you don't have a roller, maybe you got a yoga block or a couple of square pillows, some smaller but firmer pillows, stack them up. Now you're gonna put whatever apparatus you're using right under kind of the bottom of the shoulder blades here about the middle ribs so the shoulder blades are hanging off just a little fingers on the neck now squeeze your abs hard keep them hard inhale lean back keep your abs hard try to push your elbows down to the floor now exhale slow crunch now on this one notice really really slow movement putting a lot of pressure on your spine thoracic spine middle spine so you don't want to balance and swing around. I think it's start to aggravate the discs between those vertebrae. Inhale, open. Exhale, squeeze. Keep the midsection firm. Couple more here. Inhale, nice extension. Exhale, slow squeeze. Get your abs really tight. Inhale, open them up. Exhale, squeeze. Now, if you're moving pretty well here and you feel like you can open up more, add an arm reach. Inhale, reach back. Careful with the neck. Maybe touch the floor. Exhale, bring it down. This one might shift your blood pressure on a little bit up there. So big deep breaths. 
Big and reach. And exhale. Let's go a few more. Oh, one more. All right, use your elbows for stability carefully come off your props. Fair amount of weight. Leg stretching. So leg straight. Move your uh, glutes around. You know, sit up. Now, right, so bring your chest forward. Grab whatever you can. So if you can't grab your feet, slide your hands under your calf muscles. Maybe a little bend in the knees. That's okay. Now, I want you to notice the movement of the upper body or the torso. So, uh, you know, stick my chest up. Exhale, I pull my chest forward. Now, notice, I didn't go that far. You know, up. Exhale, forward. Now, I say forward because that's better than rounding down. So you are getting a little hamstring stretch here, but you're also trying to relax your lumbar spine. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Two more, inhale, exhale. While we're here, shoulder stretch. Hands behind you, it's an inverted tabletop. Fingers point to your butt, walk your feet in. They don't have to, the heels don't have to be under the knees for this one. They will when you lift. So pull your shoulder blades together, you know, lift your hips up. Exhale down. Let me move my feet forward a little. Inhale up. Exhale down. Now don't force the height on this one. If you can only lift, say, this high and you feel a pretty nice shoulder stretch, well, good. That's your height. Don't worry about what you look like. Focus on a steady movement and feel what you know you should feel. A few more. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. All right, the hips. So I'm going to face you so you can see the hip action. So hands behind again, maybe fingers out this time. Now you're going to do a little windshield wiper. So both knees drop to one side. Now notice, in this case, my right knee goes forward, my right hip lifts a little, but my chest stays centered. So I'm not turning the shoulders. Back the other way. Back the other way. So for most people, if you've ever done this move before, this might be enough. Maybe get your knee all the way down here. If this is working well for you, you're going to do it without the assistance of the hands. So sit up tall. I like arms forward for counterbalance. Drop the knees to one side. Add a little torso twist maybe. Bring it to center. Go the other way. Go the other way. So you got to experiment. Some people like to keep their arms forward. You might find some body parts stretching nicely. Some people like to add a little more rotation to the upper body. Now, careful you're not using a ton of momentum here. You're stretching your joints. You want to feel stuff sliding around. All right, everybody, I encourage you to finish up your stretches. If you got some favorites you want to do, please do so. If anything feels a little kinked up, jammed up, please take the time to loosen up. So again, my name is Adam. Thank you for joining me here on the Body Lab channel for a little mat workout. Stay healthy. Keep loving.